Hello, dear fellow Angelinians. Welcome to the Medical Technology Assessment Program for the first semester. In this video, we will be discussing the rationalization of your midterm exam for the clinical parasitology subject. So without further ado, let's start with the first question, question number 76. So the larval stage of the following worms undergoes migration except for letter A, Trichuris trichura, letter B, Ascaris lumbricoides, letter C, Trichinella spiralis, or letter D, Necator americanus. So the correct answer is letter A, Trichuris trichura. Remember, for Ascaris lumbricoides and Necator americanus, which is, by the way, a hookworm, undergo heart-to-lung migration. So don't forget the mnemonic ASH, which stands for Ascaris, Strongyloides, and hookworm. For Trichinella spiralis, this also undergoes larval migration. So there are three stages behind the pathology for trichinella, which is your trichinosis. Stage 1 involves the intestinal invasion of adults. Stage 2 is the larval migration, where larva travel from the intestine to your muscles for encystation. And lastly, the, lastly uh, stage 3 is the convalescence stage where the encysted larva okay, is already in your tissue and do not cause any signs and symptoms uh, to the infected patient or person. So as you can see in the life cycle of Trichuris, this does not exhibit larval migration because upon uh, being released, the egg or the unembryonated egg will develop in the soil as embryonated eggs. So this is the infective stage of trichuris. So the embryonated egg will in, uh, be ingested by the suspected host and will mature into a larva. Now this larva will continuously travel down to your large intestine to uh, produce eggs and the cycle continues. Next question, question number 77. What is the diagnostic stage of trichinella spiralis? So again, when we say diagnostic stage, this is where we can use several uh, methods or laboratory methods to diagnose a specific parasite. So letter A, ova. Letter B, encysted larva. Letter C, rhabdidiform larva. Or letter D, adult in tissues. So the correct answer is letter, letter B, encysted larva. So remember, for trichinella spiralis diagnosis, the best method to use here is the muscle biopsy. So we can observe the encysted larva, which is the diagnostic stage for the parasite. We can also use serological and immunological testing, such as your bentonite flocculation test and Bachmann intradermal test. We can also use, for research purposes, the Beck sinodiagnostic test. Next question, question number 78. So how would you confirm the parasite at number 77? So we are pertaining to trichinella spiralis. So we discussed already the trichinella spiralis diagnosis methods. So the best choice under these choices would be the letter C. So this, uh, the best method is to perform a muscle biopsy and demonstrate the encysted larva. Next question, question number 79. So, a medical technologist demonstrated a barrel-shaped egg with transparent protuberant bipolar plugs measuring at 4, uh, 50 to 54 microns or micra. What is the name of the parasite? So, as you can see, the given words here or the keywords here is the barrel-shaped egg with transparent protuberant bipolar plugs. So, when we say protuberant, so parang lumalabas siya sa isang side no? or patusok siya. Parang ganito. Okay, so what is the name of the parasite? So the choices would be A. Ascaris lumbricoides B. Trichuris trichura C. Enterobis vermicularis or letter D. Ancelostoma duodenale So the correct answer is letter letter B. Trichuris trichura So remember, for Trichuris trichura ova or egg, this is a barrel lemon shape with bipolar hyaline plugs no? or tinatawag natin protuberant just like here on this picture. So this is bipolar, so each poles or sides of the egg or ova contains hyaline plugs. Some uh, textbook consider this or describe this as the Japanese lantern egg. Also take note that there is a nematode that is quite similar in terms of the ova description. 
and that would be the Capillara Filipinensis. This is similar to tri uh, Trichuris Trichura, but it is a guitar and peanut shape with a flattened. So that is the keyword, flattened yung kanyang bipolar plugs. Not unlike Trichuris, which is protuberant or yung patusok. So, other choices such as your Ascaris lumbricoides do not match the description. No? So, for the egg of your Ascaris, uh, this do not contain uh, hyaline bipolar plugs, but rather contains, especially their fertilized egg, three layers. Kindly take note of the outer mammillated albuminous layer. For Enterobius, this is also do not uh, this also do not fit this criteria because it is elongated and flatted on one side. Other sources say that this is the D-shaped oba, just like here on this picture. For Ancelostoma duodenale or hookworm, as you can see, these are ovoidal with a thin shell, okay, or thin shell which are colorless. So the best diagnostic for hookworm ova is the presence of a morula ball with two to eight cell stages. So next question, question number eighty. What is the common name of Ascaris lumbricoides? Letter A, threadworm. Letter B, giant intestinal roundworm. Letter C, whipworm. Or letter D, hookworm. So the answer is letter B, giant intestinal roundworm. So very easy, no? So for the other choices, we have threadworm, letter A, that is for strong loides tercoralis. Letter C is for enterobis vermicularis, which is also known as the whipworm. For hookworms, we have Necator and Ancelostoma species. Number 81, the microfilaria of the following worms are unsheeted except for, so remember, microfilaria are the diagnostic stage of filarial worms. So except for letter A, Onchocerca volvulus, letter B, Mansonella ozardi, letter C, Mansonella perstans, or letter D, Brugia malai. So the correct answer is letter Letter D, Brugia malai. So this is, among the choices, this is the only filarial worm that is sheeted. So here are the sheeted worms for filarial uh, parasites. So remember for Wukeriria bancrofti, Brugia malai, and Loa Loa, these are all sheeted. So also, lumalabas din sa board exam, the appearance of the nuclei. So kindly take note of all of these. Um, description which are present or given in your handout. For the unsheeted ones, as you can see, we have the other filarial worms, no? Onchocerca volvulus, the three Mansonella species as well. All of these are unsheeted in their microfilaria. Next question, question number 82. Temporary inflammatory reactions, known as fugitive or caliber swellings, are characteristics of a tissue nematode infection. The microfilaria of this roundworm exhibit what periodicity? So before we answer the question, we have to identify first which filarial worm is being described in this statement. So the keywords here is the fugitive or calabar swellings. So if you answered loa loa, then that is the correct answer. So the question, the microfilaria or loa loa exhibit what periodicity? So the choices are letter A, nocturnal, B, diurnal, letter C, subperiodic, or letter D, aperiodic. So the correct answer is letter B, diurnal. So here are the three filarial worms that exhibit periodicity. For Wukereria bancrofti, this is nocturnal. So the microfilaria are more common uh, in the blood during nighttime. Where for Brugia malai, this is nocturnal subperiodic. From the term subperiodic, that means this is uh, more common during the night but can also be present during the day. While for Loa Loa, which is our answer, correct answer is the urinal, which is strictly during the day. For the other filarial worms, these are all aperiodic or non-periodic. So that means these parasites do not exhibit periodicity. So that means they can be acquired uh, any time of the day. And mostly of these other filarial worms such as Onchocerca and Mansonella may be acquired not in the blood but in your skin. Next question, question number 83. 
Which of the following pairs of helminths or worms cannot be differentiated by the appearance of their eggs? So we are looking for the organisms or parasites that have very similar egg forms. So letter A, Trichuris trichura and Capillaria philippinensis. Letter B, Necator americanus and Ancelostoma duodenale. Letter C, Ascaris lumbricoides and Enterobius vermicularis. Or letter D, Strongyloides circularis and Necator americanus. So the correct answer is letter B, Necator americanus and Ancelostoma duodenale, or what we call the hookworms. Remember, for hookworm ova, these are all similar for all species. So these are ovoidal, thin-shelled, and colorless eggs. So this contains marula ball, which are 2 to 8 cell stages. For the other incorrect choices, we have Trichuris, Trichura, and Capillaria philippinensis. So both of these are quite similar in terms of their egg by having bipolar plugs. But remember, for Trichuris, this has a protuberant bipolar plugs, while for Capillaria, it has a flattened bipolar plugs. Next is Ascaris and Enterobius. So these are very dissimilar or not similar at all because Ascaris is circular while for Enterobius, this is elongated and flattened on one side or what we call the D-shape. Lastly, choice D, Strongyloides tercularis versus Necator americanus. So if our uh, correct answer is not available, this is the next best answer because Strongyloides and Necator are very similar in terms of their ova or egg forms. So these are ovoidal with uh, colorless thin shells. But remember for Strongyloides, upon release in the stool, these are already embryonated. So that means they all, uh, already contain a fully developed larva. Well, for Necator, these are released as unembryonated. So that means it needs to further develop in the soil to become a fully developed larva. Hence the appearance of a morula ball. So as you can see, Paracillum bundle of grapes. No? Well, for Strongyloides, this is already fully developed. Question number 84. So the best time for collecting specimen for the diagnosis of pinworm infection is? So before we answer this question, we have to identify first which is the pinworm nematode. So if your answer is Enterobius vermicularis, then you are correct. So the choices are A. Noontime, B. Early in the morning after taking a bath, letter C. Any time of the day, or letter D. Early in the morning before bowel movements. So the correct answer is letter D. Early in the morning before bowel movements. So for the diagnosis of Enterobis vermicularis, remember the diagnostic stage is the eggs or ova. So we are uh, looking for the D-shaped egg present under the microscope. So these particular eggs are acquired through perianal swab or what we call the Graham's scotch tape method. So this is done early in the morning before defecating and bathing of the infected person. So this is the method for Graham scotch tape. Next question, question number 85. Which of the following surface body structures is found at the caudal end of an adult nematode? So before we answer this question, we have to look first the keywords present on the question. So the keywords are caudal end. So remember, when we say caudal, that means posterior or at the end of the uh, adult nematode or worm. So the choices are letter A, teeth, letter B, buccal cavity, letter C, esophagus, or letter D, copulatory bursa. So the correct answer is letter D, copulatory bursa. Remember, for the other choices such as your teeth, buccal cavity, and esophagus, all of these are located anteriorly or what we call the cephalic. So that means it's on the front of the particular parasite. For buccal cavity, this is also known as the oral cavity of the worm. And the choice copulatory bursa is usually present in male adult worms at the posterior end or caudal end of their uh, anatomy. Next question, question number 86. Which stage of Trichuris trichura is infective for humans? So we are looking for the infective stage of this parasite. Letter A, proglotid. Letter B, filariform larva. Letter C, rhabditiform larva. Or letter D, embryonated ova. 
So the correct answer is letter D, embryonated ova. So the mode of transmission of this parasite is through embryonated ova by ingestion of the particular egg. So remember the other uh, choices for proglutid, this is not an infective stage but rather a diagnostic stage for cestodes. Example of cestode, we have your tenia solium, tenia saginata, and such. So pag sinabi nating diagnostic, that means we only use this as a diagnostic tool using our laboratory procedures or methods. Next choice is filariform larva. Remember, this is more common for hookworm and strongyloides. So this is their infective stage, the filariform larva. Letter C, raptitiform larva. This is not an infective stage but rather a diagnostic stage for hookworm and strongyloides as well. And lastly, embryonated. This is for um, Trichuris trichura. There are also other nematodes that has embryonated egg as their infective stage. So don't forget the acronym HATE. Age, Nana, Ascaris lumbricoides, Trichuris trichura, and Enterobius vermicularis. Question number 87. Elephantiasis is a complication associated with which of the following? Letter A, cystocercosis. Letter B, guinea worm. Letter C, hydatid cyst disease, or letter D, filariae. So the correct answer is letter D, filariae. So for the filarial worms that causes elephantiasis, we have Wuchereria bancrofti and Brugia malai. For Wuchereria, this is more associated as the lower filariasis, so that means this attack the lower lymphatic system of the patient. While for Brugia malai, this is more common as the upper filariasis. So remember, both of these exhibit elephantiasis. So this is a condition characterized by gross enlargement of an infected area of the body. So for the gross enlargement, this is due to the obstruction of the lymphatic system of your microfilaria. So this results in the accumulation of your lymph fluid to the area. That's why there is the presence of a gross enlargement. Other signs and symptoms for um, elephantiasis, we have hydrocele, which is the enlargement of the scrotal sac of male patient infected with this parasites. Tropical pulmonary eosinophilia is also associated, so the lungs are affected with this particular uh, disease. So later on, we'll be discussing this in separate. Next question, number 88. Which parasite ova is described as plain, flat, convex, D-shaped? So this is already discussed, so I hope you can get it correctly. So A, Ascaris lumbricoides, B, as Ancelostoma duodenale, C, Enterobis vermicularis, or letter D, Trichuris trichura. So the correct answer is letter C, Enterobius vermicularis. So your Enterobius vermicularis ova is elongated with flattened on one side, or what we call the D-shaped ova. Next question, question number 89. Which hookworm is equipped with a semilunar cutting plate on its buccal cavity? Choices are letter A, Ancelostoma brasiliense, letter B, Ancelostoma caninum, letter C, Ancelostoma duodenale, or letter D, Necator americanus. So the correct answer is letter D, Necator americanus. So here is the complete differentiation of all the hookworm adults on their buccal cavity. So for Necator americanus, this is the correct answer for semilunar cutting plates. So remember, Necator cut cutting plates. For Ancelostoma duodenale, it contains ventral pairs of fused teeth, while for Caninum, it contains three ventral pairs with also fused teeth. So the, to differentiate Caninum to Brasiliense, which are, by the way, both are a zoonotic, so this infects animals. So, fused teeth for caninum while unfused teeth for brasiliense. Next question, question number 90. Tropical pulmonary eosinophilia is associated with what nematode infection? So, we discussed this a while ago or we included this on your filarial worms. So the correct answer for this particular question is letter C, Wuchereria bancrofti. 
So, together with your Wukereria bancrofti and Brugia species such as Malayi and Timori, all of these causes your tropical pulmonary eosinophilia. So, this is a hyper-responsive pulmonary syndrome in response to the trapped microfilaria within the lung tissue. So, this is characterized by nocturnal cough, dyspnea, and wheezing. Next question, question number 91. So, the examination of sputum may be necessary to diagnose infection with which parasite? Letter A, Paragonimus westermani. Letter B, Trichinella spiralis. Letter C, Wokereria bancrofti. Or letter D, Fasciola hepatica. So, the correct answer is letter A, Paragonimus westermani. So, here is the recap of the choices. So, the correct answer for uh, sputum is Paragonimus westermani, specifically bloody sputum. Well, for Trichinella spiralis, muscle biopsy is the specimen of choice to highlight the presence of encysted larva. Next, Wukereria bancrofti, the specimen of choice is blood to diagnose microfilaria. And lastly, Fasciola hepatica, which requires stool or liver biopsy. The, for stool, this is uh, more associated with the presence of eggs, while for liver biopsy, the presence of adult worms in the liver. Next question, question number 92. Examination of a 24-hour unpreserved urine specimens are sometimes helpful in the recovery of which parasite? Choices are letter A, Trichomonas vaginalis tropozoites, letter B, Schistosoma hematobium eggs, letter C, Enterobius vermicularis eggs, and letter D, Strongyloides stercularis larva. So the correct answer is letter B, Schistosoma hematobium eggs, or the bladder fluke. So here is the recap for all the choices for question number 92. So the answer for 24-hour urine sample is Schistosoma hematobium eggs. So this is used to increase the viability or also to increase the yield of the recovery for this particular parasite. Trichomonas vaginalis, although urine sample may be used, remember to process the urine sample immediately because tropozoites are very delicate uh, organism, especially for Trichomonas vaginalis. So they disintegrate upon exposure to air. So as much as possible, we have to uh, observe them immediately under the microscope. For Enterobis vermicularis and Strongyloides larvae, stool is the specimen of choice. So just a nice to know, here is the motility of Trichomonas vaginalis tropozoite under the microscope. So take note of the corkscrew, rapid jerky, or quivering motility. Next question, question number 93. Which parasite may result in vitamin B12 deficiency to the infected host and individuals with pernicious anemia are predisposed to, uh, to more severe symptoms? So the choices are A. Dipolibotrium latum B. Echinococcus granulosus C. Hymenolepis diminuta or letter D. Tenia saginata So the correct answer is letter A. Dipolibotrium latum so here is the recap for all the choices for question number 93. Again, for D. latum, this is associated with vitamin B12 deficiency, while for Echinococcus granulosus, hydatidsis is the pathology. H. diminuta is more common as cystocercosis or the presence of the larval form of the parasite, and usually uh, people infected with this parasite are asymptomatic. While for tenia saginata, this is what we call the teniasis or the presence of adult worms in the infected person. Next question, question number 94. Hematuria is a typical sign of human infection caused by which parasite? Here are the choices. Letter A, Trypanosoma cruzi. Letter B, Trichinella spiralis. Letter C, Trichomonas vaginalis. And letter D, Schistosoma hematobium. So the correct answer is letter D, Schistosoma hematobium. Although trichomonas can be can also be observed in the urine, trichomonas vaginalis is diagnosed with other um, samples or specimen of choice such as your urethral and vaginal discharge. So here is the recap of the choices for question number 94. So choice A, Trypanosoma cruzi. So this is not associated with hematuria because the signs and symptoms target the heart. 
So this is also known as the Chagas disease. Letter B, Trichinella spiralis, again also not uh, associated with hematuria because the infection involves the muscle tissues of the infected person. Letter C, Trichomonas vaginalis, although this is associated with urine, persistent vaginitis and urethritis is more common as signs and symptoms. So remember, the inflammation of your um, vagina and urethra is more common for this particular disease. This is also known as the ping pong disease. So the most common um, sample for this is the vaginal or urethral discharge. And lastly, the correct answer is as hematobium. So this is what we call the urinary schistosomiasis, which is characterized by painful urination and hematuria. Question number 95. Charcot-laden crystals in stool may be associated with an immune response and are thought to be formed from the breakdown products of what cells. So here are the choices. So remember, for parasitic infection, the predominant cell is usually, letter B, eosinophils. So here is the picture of charcot-laden crystals in stool. So these are pyramidal crystals from the disintegration of eosinophils which stain bright red on trichrome staining. Next question, number 96. Which stage of Tainia saginata is usually infective for humans? Choices are Cystocircus bovis for letter A, letter B, Cystocircoid, letter C, Cystocircus cellulosae, and letter D, Hydatid cyst. So the correct answer is letter A, Cystocircus bovis. So here is the recap for the choices for question number 96. So the correct answer for the infective stage of Tainia solium is Cystocircus bovis. For H. diminuta or Hymenolepis diminuta and Dipelidium caninum, the infective stage is Cystocircoid larva. While for Tainia saginata, this is what we call the Cystocircus cellulosae. For Echinococcus granulosus, this is hydatid cyst. And for the um, Pseudophilidaean, your D-latum and Spirometra, the infective stage is what we call the Plerocircoid larva. Next, question number 97. Which schistosoma species has a large terminal spine? Choices are letter A, S. hematobium, letter B, S. japonicum, letter C, S. mansoni, and letter D, S. mekongi. So the correct answer for the species with a large terminal spine is S. hematobium, letter A. So for schistosome or blood flux, the best diagnostic criteria is for the differentiation of their egg forms. So for the morphology, S. japonicum it contains a small lateral nub, while for S. mansoni, it contains prominent large lateral spine, while for S. hematobium, it contains a large prominent terminal spine, and for the non-human uh, schistosome, we have Schistosoma mekongi. It has a oval minute lateral spine or knob, same as japonicum, while for Schistosoma intercalatum, it has an elongated terminal spine similar to S. hematobium. So let's have a recap of the schistosome, especially the three main human blood flux. So can you guess for the first picture, which schistosoma species is this? So it has a small lateral nub. So when we say lateral, that means the nub is located at the side of the ova or egg. So this is schistosoma japonicum, small lateral nub. Well, the second one is Schistosoma mansoni because it contains a prominent large lateral. So again, this is the spine is located at the lateral or the side portion of the ova. While for Schistosoma hematobium, it has a large prominent terminal spine at the end of the ova or the posterior end of the ova. So question number 98. Consumption of the infective larval stage and cysted on aquatic plants that have not been cooked results in infection with which parasite? So the keywords here is the consumption of fresh aquatic plants. So which trematode is usually associated with this? Letter A, Clonarchia sinensis. Letter B, Fasciola hepatica. Letter C, Heterophysis serophys. Or letter D, Paragonimus westermanni. 
So the correct answer is letter B, fasciola hepatica. So let's have some mnemonics for trematodes, especially on the sources of their infective stages. So remember, for trematodes, these are divided into organ-dwelling and blood-dwelling. So for the organ-dwelling trematode, aside from the blood flux, all require two intermediate hosts. The first one is automatically a snail intermediate host. Example of this would be fasciola hepatica. For the blood flux, they only require one intermediate host, which is usually the snail. Now let's move on to the second intermediate host. For fish, this is what the mnemonics is. HOC or hawk, heterophys, opistorchis, and clonorchis. Well, for plant or vegetation, just like our question a while ago, remember the three Fs, fasciola hepatica, fasciola gigantica, and fasciolopsis buski. For crab, we only have one, and that is your crab base or P. westermanni. For snail, we have Echinococcus ilocanum, or sorry, Echinostoma ilocanum. And for ants, we have Dicrocoelium dendriticum. Next question, number 99. Paragonimus westermanni infection is acquired by, so we discussed this in your mnemonics, so letter A, drinking contaminated water, Letter B, eating infected crustaceans. Letter C, eating infected fish. Or letter D, eating infected water chestnuts. So the correct answer is letter B, eating infected crustaceans, such as crab. And lastly, number 100, which is also your passing rate for your board exam. So manifest natin yan. So the question is, the determination of Fasciolopsis species versus Fasciola species can only be accomplished in the laboratory by the recovery by which of the following? So the choices are eggs, B larva, C for adults, and D for sporosis. So the correct answer is letter C, adults. Remember, in our discussion in your seminar, Fasciolopsis buski and Fasciola hepatica have very similar ova or eggs. So this is not used for our diagnosis or comparison between the two parasites. But rather, we use the adult forms of your parasites. Your Fasciolopsis buski has no cephalic cone or shoulders. So as you can see from the oral cavity, the line okay, going towards the body of the parasite is connected or smooth. But for fasciola hepatica, the presence of shoulders is very evident. So that ends our discussion for the midterm examination rationale. So remember the days you wish for the things you have now. So never ever forget that you are loved and I am already proud of you because you are still fighting for your future. But make me proud again, future medical technologists. Thank you everyone and I wish you all the best.